Yo, how's it going everyone? I'm Ricky and you've entered the realm of colour. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I paint gold non-metallic metal, or NMM for short. Here are a couple of 2D images off of Google showing the basics of light placement on a cylinder and a sphere. As you can see on the cylinder, the lights and the shadow follow a straight line from top to bottom. This can be used on a space marine's leg or arm armour. With a sphere, you have a spotlight facing whichever direction your imagined light source is and it will get darker towards the other side of it such as underneath. On the Blood Angels Captain I'm going to paint the leg and the helmet and on the Corn Blood Warrior I'll paint the rim on the leg armour plate. This will give us quite a few different shaped areas. With slightly thinned Aldan Sunset I applied a thin first coat. When painting this colour over black you need to do about three or four coats to get a nice solid even base coat. Once you've got a nice solid base coat, it's time for the first shading. As my imagined light source will be brightest on the left side of the marine, that side leg will also be the brightest. With the knee pad and helmet being more of a sphere shape, our light will be on the top right of them when looking at the model from the front. This means we'll start shading away from these areas, so around to the side of the legs, about halfway under the knee pad, and part of the way around the helmet. This shading mix will be Avalanche Sunset with a bit of XV88 added. At this point, you don't need to be neat, we'll clean it up more later. Each shade and highlight will be done with thin down paint. This to avoid brush marks and make it nice and smooth. Blood Warrior's armor plate has a sharp bend in the middle. The shading will come up to that line and stop. Next to it will be the lightest. This will be a lot clearer to see later on. For the next few layers of shading, I add in Rhinox Hide to the previous mix and shade smaller areas away from the lightest area and also the deepest recesses, such as under the knee pad and in the grooves on the fire armor and front foot. Same goes for the Blood Warrior, except in the middle of the darkest area, it's right next to the lightest. This helps create a nice contrast. You can see I've also added a dark patch on the left to stop it looking too flat. Again, don't worry too much about neatness. Remember that metal, especially armour, will have been knocked around and bashed a lot in battles, so it will have a lot or blemishes and scratches, so any little mistakes can pass us out. If your blends look a little harsh, you can also do a 50-50 mix of the light and dark colours, and then thinly apply it where the two colours meet. This will help them blend a little bit nicer. Marine's armour was still looking a little flat for my liking, so I added extra shading using the last shade colour. When applying this, I paint almost up to the edge of the armour panels, but leave a little lighter area around the edge. It's hard to explain in words, but you can see it well on the knee pad and the foot. Before highlighting, I did a quick clean up stage using pure Avalan Sunset. This is where you'll start concentrating on the lightest areas. So have a good think about where the light will hit the armor uh, or weapon, etc., or whatever you're painting. See back to the images at the start of the video for reference if you need to. Thank you. 
for the corner mark, we also edge highlighted all the areas, even parts that were shaded. This shows light hitting the very edges of the metal. So onto highlights, from here I started adding white to Avalanche Sunset for progressive highlights, painting a small area each time. The first mix was roughly 75% yellow to 25% white, and then 50-50, and then 25% yellow to 75% white. So this is what it looks like after adding a bit more white to the mix. As you can see, it makes a huge difference. We've got a couple more stages to go. I then went to pure white. You want to use this quite sparingly, otherwise you'll bleach out a lot of the yellow. Mostly, I did very thin edge highlights on the highest parts, so closest to the light source, and small dots on the sharp edges such as the corners of the armour. I also dotted the center area of rounded shapes, such as on the helmet and each section of the knee pad. Once that is done, we'll make it a bit more golden while also smoothing out the blends and shading. This is done with a glaze of Uriel Yellow. Basically, I just used water to really thin the paint. If you brush it across your nail and you could just about see the yellow, then you've got a good paint consistency. The goal of a glaze is to merely tint the area with the chosen colour. Once your glaze is fully dry, you grab your white again and just dot sparingly on the very lightest areas. And with that, the non-metallic gold is done. So that's it, that's how I paint non-metallic metal. A lot of it is where you're placing in your lightest and darkest colours to create reflections and shading to get that desired effect. I hope this has helped a bit. I will do a few more videos in the future explaining paint consistencies and I'll do some copper non-metallic and other colours. Well, thank you very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate it and I hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye everyone.